So let's start with the presentation, the introduction to live event monitoring with the Excel tool. Please let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus Becker. I'm the technical director here at NTI Audio. And sitting next to me is Paul Sinclair, our marketing specialist, who will take care of your question during the webinar. And he's assisting me in other issues as well. The topics of today's presentation start with the SPL and LEQ definitions. We have some legal aspects to talk about, the necessary preparations for a live event monitoring, then we have a practical presentation, followed by reporting and documentation issues, and at the end we will have a Q&A session where I will comment the received questions and provide some auxiliary information. The duration of this webinar will be about 30 minutes. So why are we interested at all in live event monitoring? The key aspect, of course, is that our ear is a highly sensitive, delicate uh, organ that deserves proper protection access against excess noise levels. And this is, of course, also represented in the various national laws that clearly stipulate a sound level monitoring at live events, for instance, concerts, and as also in the neighborhood to protect the people from these excess noise levels. And as we are doing that, as we're responsible for this task, of course, we want to do our job right, meaning we want to use the correct test equipment. We want to set up this whole system professionally and calibrate it correctly. We want to take care accurately of the event monitoring and in the end have a report in our hand as a proof of the good job that we did. Let's look at this time plot of uh, two different measures, the LAF maximum plus K1, whatever that means, I'm going to explain that to you, and the LAQ 60 plus K1. Um, just at this point, I would like to add a short poll to get a better understanding of um, your knowledge. So please tick the boxes of those terms that you are familiar with. You can select several of them, of course, and uh, just to give me the chance to better understand where the audience uh, has its uh, understanding of the different terms used in live event monitoring. So it seems that almost everybody has taken his choice. I'm going to show you the result. It's a pretty good level. Of course, I will now explain all these terms in more detail to you. So we are back in our presentation. And here comes kind of the solution. The first term in my poll was SPL, sound pressure level, which is typically represented by an L. Sound pressure level alone is physically the instantaneous level of a sound coming to our microphone. So in uh, the T&M world, test and measurement world, we are very rarely using the SPL alone, especially when it goes into live event monitoring. We usually find a A or a C behind the L, a or C stands for frequency weightings. You see on the right hand side a graph with an A weighting curve. This A weighting curve represents kind of the hearing perception of our ear. Our ear has a decrease of sensitivity in the lower and in the higher frequency range and this is represented by this frequency weighting curve. C weighting is similar, A weighting is more for lower sound pressure levels, C weighting for the higher sound pressure levels. That's the difference between the two of them. Then we have a F, an S or an I behind the AOC. So F, S or I stands for fast, slow or impulse. And now these are time weightings. The difference from the time weighting to the frequency weighting is that with the time weighting, we just look more at the sound events that have just occurred at the time when we were measuring or just a few milliseconds or second before. So the events that have happened longer ago are less relevant for the measurement result. 
the events that have just occurred during the measurement or before, these are the ones that are weighted with the highest amount. So this is a time weighting FSOI. Then we have the very important term EQ that stands for the equivalent continuous sound pressure level. This is a kind of an average that is built over the entire measurement duration. Over the whole period of our measurement, we are averaging the sound pressure level in this way that gives the EQ. So this is the key measure also from the legal side that has to be considered. Then we have the 15 or 30 or 60, whatever, a figure that can also be added to this measurement. And that means that the LEQ would be measured over this corresponding time. It's counted in minutes. And this can be blockwise or it can be gliding. So gliding means, for instance, the last 15 minutes are the database from our LEQ measurement. If you look, look, if you look back to the uh, top uh, graph, you see here LEQ 60 minutes. So here the 60 stands for one hour duration, A-weighted uh, LEQ. Then we have minimum or maximum. This is the, again, the normal sound pressure level with the minimum maximum levels that occur per recording interval. Peak would be the absolute peak that occurs during a measurement. DT stands for the logging interval. So an LEQ DT would be the AQ LEQ during the log interval of, for instance, five seconds. And the K1, the correction factor, but I will come back to that later. Just the other explanation of what we have been just talking about. Here you see the kind of live sound. We call it the live sound, the LAQ which is recorded over time. So each measurement point here would be the LAQ per logging interval. If we plot the LEQ, the averaged sound pressure level, you see this solid black line. That's, you see the behavior is much more, it has some higher inertia somehow, like the instantaneous, the live sound. So this is the measure that has to be considered primarily. And then we could, of course, look at too many more curves, like the maximum here, the blue line, or the minimum. I haven't it here because it would become too much, or the peak, and so on. But these are just uh, for explanation what do these uh, different measures mean. Giving you some um, information about the legal aspect, sound limits. Uh, what is very important before I give you these examples, please obey the national legislation in your country. There is an international standard for these sound limits, but each country has implemented its own uh, individual league laws. So please look into that and uh, just to be on the correct side when you do a live event monitoring. I have prepared two examples. The one is Germany. Germany says that a live event must be monitored with the LAEQ, so the A-weighted EQ. Uh, in blocks of 30 minutes. And the monitoring instrument must have a feature that informs the front of house operator if this LEAQ exceeds the 95 dB. So that he knows we are coming close to the absolute limit of 99 dB. The absolute limit must not be exceeded under any circumstances. Again, 99 dB stands, of course, for the LAEQ. In Switzerland, the situation is a little bit different. Here we have the gliding LAQ over 60 minutes as the key measure. If your event would stay below 93 dB, there's no restriction. You can just do it. If you exceed the 93 dB, you have to apply for a permission to do your event. And uh, there will be some restrictions from the local authorities. And if you even exceed the 96 dB going up to 100 here, the 100 dB is the absolute maximum that must not be exceeded. There are some pretty tight restrictions. For instance, you have to offer a free chill out zone to the public, freely accessible and so on. There are some restrictions that have to be obeyed. Just one more hint about um, the sound pressure level, the decibel scale, you might have seen that. Um, giving you an example, if we talk about 60 dB, what is that 
understandable. What is the meaning? For instance, you have a conversation between two persons in a distance of one to two meters. This is typically 60 dB loud. Now, if we would add 6 dB to this level, to this 60, we actually double the sound pressure level. 6 dB plus means doubling the level. So another 6 dB is, of course, again, doubling or quadrupling the 60 level. Now we're coming close to preparing a live event. What do we have to do? The first thing, when we set up our PA system, we have to make sure that there is a safety distance between the line arrays, for instance, and the zone where the public is located. So there must be this safety distance. And secondly, uh, we have to take care that the sound on our stage for the musicians is adjusted properly and, of course, also for the public itself. So this includes verifying the polarity of the speakers, adjusting the delay of the delay speakers, if there are any. So if you have a large area that has to be covered, you need delay speakers that have to be adjusted properly, cancelling the feedback frequencies and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a wide field with many things to be done and we will cover that in a future webinar, by the way. It would be too much to just include all this information in this webinar. And the next task you have to fulfill is you have to place or prepare your measurement. How do you do that? Um, first step is you apply a pink noise on the PA system and then you try to find intuitively the loudest point in the public area. This is kind of your reference point. This is where the law says this, for instance, in Germany, you remember 99 dB absolute maximum, which must not exceed it. So this would be the point where you have to verify that it's uh, complying to the law. However, you very rarely would measure at this point for different reasons. You would rather look for another position which is closer to the PA system, to the line array speakers, where you definitely or eventually place your microphone during the event. So why do you do that? The key reason is that you are responsible for the correct sound level from the PA system. You cannot have an impact on the sound of the noise which is coming from the crowd itself, whether it's cheering or, or shouting or clapping, whatever. The sound, of course, adds to the overall sound level, but this is not what you're responsible for. You're responsible to the sound coming from here. So that is what you want to measure. And for this reason, you rather place your monitoring microphone close to the PA system, not too close, of course, let's say one meter distance, than here in the middle of the audience. Now, then you execute a sound pressure level measurement with pink noise, again, at these two positions. And the difference between these two measurements gives you this K1 correction factor. So this means the result that you acquire here in this position plus or minus the K1 factor gives you the sound level that is actually happening in here. And this is the reason why we have this K1 implemented. By the way, all these measurements and calculations are automatically executed by the Excel tool. So the recording of the sound level here or here, calculating the K1 and applying the K1 to the measurement result. Could be, of course, that the K1 factor is negative. Don't be astonished about that. It's absolutely okay. Negative K1 factor just means that the sound in your measuring position is higher. The sound from this pink noise test signal is higher than here in the loudest point of the public area, which is absolutely okay and gives you the confirmation that this noise from the public will not have a big impact on your measurement result. As mentioned before, it could also be that uh, you are responsible for making sure that the neighbors are not bothered too much about the music, the noise level from this concert. So you would just do the same measurement with the location, with the microphone here and the measurement position. And again, at the window of your neighbor, building a second K1 factor. And this allows you to monitor during the uh, concert the sound level at the window of your neighbor and make sure that it complies to the legislation as well.
So these are the final steps to be done. You should, of course, uh, select the appropriate standard in the Excel 2 measurement menu. I'm going to show you that. You can, if you like, take advantage of the spectrum feedback, the spectrum display measurement of the Excel 2 if you want to optimize the equalization of your setup. And then you can add a so-called stack light to visualize the feedback from the Excel 2. The Excel 2 here has a small LED which gives you three different colors, either green, which means the sound pressure level is clearly below the given limits, orange would mean it's coming close to the limits, and red would mean you are exceeding the limits, so you have to adjust the volume. And these feedback, this optical feedback, can just be uh, shown also on this stack light if you like. And the third option you have is that you use our sound level predictor. This is a nice software which we provide and this would calculate a kind of a forecast of the next 10 minutes. You remember that the LEQ, the key measure, uh, is rather slow in its behavior. So if the sound level rises, the LEQ with a certain delay would of course reflect that. And uh, because you just want to avoid to exceed these absolute limits, the sound level predictor would warn you. Uh, pay attention, in, in a few minutes time, if nothing is changed, you would exceed that limit. That's the message it gives you. So it allows you to, again, turn down the level of your installation a little bit to, the, to comply to the law. Unfortunately, this level predictor does not uh, work with, for the German and the Austrian legislation. That this is due to technical reasons. Uh, it cannot be implemented on this base. So we're coming to the practical presentation. And for that reason, I'm going to switch over to my projector. You see here the current measurement of the XL2 that I have in front of me. And the first thing I want to show you is here on this menu, you see you can, see, uh, for instance, enter the screen with the limits mentioned just before. The limit for the green LED means as soon as long as the LAQ 5 seconds is below the 69 dB, the LED would be green. If we exceed the 96, it would be get turn orange. And if it exceeds the 100 dB, it would turn red. Then here we have the logging screen. Uh, you remember as well the DT, the logging interval, this is defined in here. Here we have five seconds just right now. Now we come to the K set, this K factor. I want to present that uh, to you how it is executed. And for that reason, I have a small setup with an Emma Pro audio generator who will now replay pink noise through a speaker. And I make these two measurements emulating the situation in the audience at the loudest point and at the measuring point. So you have surely noticed five seconds long the SPL has been recorded, the LAQ five seconds. Actually, this is the key figure. And now I repeat the same measurement and of course, in a different position for my measurement. So this is the second value, the second K value here that you see. And the difference between the two of them is shown below. So this is actually my K1 that is now being applied on all my measurements. So maybe you notice it just the screen turned red. What happened? I unplugged my microphone and connected it to a, a, DV, a CD player, which is just now, now replaying sound from a concert recording. So we will now start our measurement. But before we do, we just I want to show you one more thing, and that is we will now select a predefined profile that has been saved on the Excel 2. And for instance, I take you the SLV. This is the Swiss standard for monitoring a live event. So the uh, Excel 2 automatically loads all these parameters. I start my measurement. You see this down here. This is the indicator that it has started. And here you see the first result. After five seconds, you see the first result. Here you see the counter that the measurement is going on. And the orange color of my 
screen tells me that I'm pretty critical close to this absolute limit. So now I could either adjust the volume by turning it down and then it should hopefully turn green. You see here or in the other direction if I increase the volume again uh, sooner or later it might turn red meaning it exceeds the 100 dB absolute maximum. Here on the second line by the way you see the LAQ60 this was the key measure for the reporting for the live event monitoring. This one is maybe more important to the sound technician uh, to the front of house technician to give him a direct feedback what's happening so this is a kind of an earlier feedback than this one. So it seems we are just below the 100. Anyway, the screen would turn red if we exceed the 100 dB. Here now, yeah, it just happened to saw it. Good. So let's get back to our presentation. It might be that you have to monitor not just one position. For instance, as I showed you before, you have to monitor the situation in the audience during the concert, but you also have to monitor the situation at your neighbor's window. So in this case, you need two XL2 for these two measurements. Can you um, show the results of these two instruments in parallel on your PC? Yes, the answer is, correct, is positive. The only restriction is you have to have the XL2 remote measurement option installed on your XL2. You must have USB device server. These are these small white boxes that are available on the market. These are standard devices that just translate the USB data stream into a TCP IP stream that can be connected to your PC via a wired or wireless network. But what is very important, it must be an intranet. You cannot establish such a setup via the internet because it would the data would not pass through firewalls and so on but within an intranet you can set up such a um, multi measurement system some words about the reporting uh, nti offers a template for this sound report i just show you how you can get it here we have the My NTI, My NTI Audio website. By registering at NTI Audio, you get access to this website. And here in the Excel 2 support page, you see here we have the reporting tools. So by clicking on these links, you will receive the corresponding Microsoft Excel sheet, which is already prepared to create exactly this kind of report, like here. So creating means it um, acquires the logged data from the Excel 2, includes it into the report, the key measures, what was the maximum level and so on. You can add your own name or the name of the uh, event and so on and print it out as a reference. Included is also a uh, time plot so that you see the what has happened during your event and of course you can also and large specific areas of this time slot if you're in, interested in. By the way, you can also record the sound, you, so record really the music signal during the whole event with the Excel 2 and this gives you the chance to investigate, for instance, specific peaks. If a peak exceeds a certain limit, you can not only look at it, but you can also listen to what was the reason for that and this gives you a better feedback of judging whether there's something coming from has been come from the stage or whether it was maybe somebody in the public who uh, blew up a cracker or whatever. So this is a, an additional feedback you can take advantage of with the Excel 2 Well, I'm at the end of uh, my presentation. If you have any questions, now is the time to type them in. Um, otherwise, you can, of course, always um, contact us, contact our subsidiaries worldwide or our independent partners if you have a specific question or visit our website where we will also publish the recording of today's session within a few days time as I said we will inform you. So let me briefly look at the question that have popped in.
yeah, this uh, information or this question about the pink noise signal uh, has also already been um, answered. And I see another question that was uh, whether what is more uh, relevant on yeah, the LAF maximum or the LAQ. So uh, that's a good question as well. I can briefly go back to that um, slide. Uh, you could argue that, for instance, here the LAF maximum, the blue line, as it is higher, uh, might better represent the exposure of our ears to this noise. However, the answer is no. The LEQ is actually the more relevant, the more accurate representation of the dose to which our ears have been exposed. Because remember, this is only the maximum. There's also a minimum. And the LEQ is really reflecting the average of what our ears have been exposed to during the whole event. Then, just let me see whether there is another question. Ah, there's also another question, very good, coming just in. Um, somebody wanted to know whether I can lock my settings. Let's say I'm the responsible technician for the whole recording, but in the end I have to hand over my test instrument to um, an assistant, and I just want to make sure that this guy doesn't amend anything on my instrument. Is that feasible? The answer is yes. I just go back to my recording here. I, I stop it for a moment. So in this case, I don't have to save it. But um, you remember we selected this predefined profile uh, in this menu. Now, if I'm going on this menu, you see I have only a restricted access actually with the K set. I cannot amend, uh, I, I can just look what has, if the measurement would be going on now. I cannot change them anymore. They are fixed, they are um, blocked actually. And um, I can also only look at the test results. So, for instance, I cannot amend the limits. Whoever would operate my XL2 really can only switch it on, look at it, what's happening, but he cannot m compromise or modify any important settings. So I am absolutely sure that my measurement will be according to the uh, legal restrictions. Uh, then there comes in the question whether this sound recording, the music recording on my XL2 applies for the whole event. Again, the answer is yes. The XL2 does have this ability to really record, even if it's two or three years, uh, whatever hours long, to uh, save them automatically on the SD card. And you can download that and listen to it in your wave player uh, after the concert. It's quite a powerful feature, actually. Well, ah, there's one more question coming in. Yeah, it concerns the, uh, the reports, reporting whether we can, uh, for instance, um, monitor several events and, and make the uh, report at the end of that month not just after each event. Again, the answer is yes. Suppose that your SD card has enough onboard memory, you can record several events, one after the other, independently on the SD card, and download them to your laptop or to your PC at any time to do these reporting. Just make sure that your SD card has enough memory on board. Good. So, unless there are some more questions, but I don't see any, it seems that we answered everything. Um, anyway, if you will come up with more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We will be pleased to answer your demand for information. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you again 
Um, during for our next meeting, you will receive, of course, a notice of our next meeting as soon as we have scheduled it. So, once again, thank you for your attention and see you again soon. Bye-bye.